on that shatter bug, baby. That bait <laughs> barely hit the water cloud. That fish was right where he should be. Nice fish, Bob. Nice fish. Good. Let's bring him into the net. There we go. Fishing Northeast River and Northeast Creek with Captain Carl. I'm Bob Murray. It's Delaware Valley Outdoors. Stay tuned. If the weather don't get us, we're going to catch some fish. <laughs> Valley Outdoors, and I'm down on the northeast with my good, good captain friend, Captain Carl. He said, Bob, I got a good little bait I want to talk to you about, or a couple good little baits I want to talk to you about, yes, sir. and the fish are in the northeast creek. That's what we're fishing here today. But I don't want, the area we're in is the northeast, but what we're fishing here, Carl, that's the most important part, because you can take this knowledge and apply it to any other creek and that kind of stuff. What do we have here? What we're going to talk about the, the, the rip rap here and stuff. Well, we've got the creek bends and it, as it snakes and makes its bends and it has a, a variety of shoreline cover for the fishermen to fish and the bass to hold to. Here we have some rip raft by shoreline. We have some, you can see some grass and stuff growing on it. We have a little island here. We got a stick there on the southern end of that island. Um, drops into deep water. As the sun comes up later in the day, when these cold, this front moves through, this side of this island will be shaded. And they'll hold up on this side of this island real good. Over here, it gets flatter on this left side over here. And as you can see, I started you out with the chatterbait, you know, um, textbook. Windblown shorelines, spinnerbait. You know, that chatterbait fills the bill perfectly. The, the water's a little bit stained up from the wind that's been beating it up from yesterday and last night. And we've got a flood high tide. And uh, we're just gonna fish, we're gonna stay close, try to catch some fish up in the flooded timber and the grass and everything. And we'll also fish off onto the drop and try to find some sitting there. We're gonna let the fish tell us what they want and we're not gonna tell them what we want. You've got the white chatterbait, three eighths ounce. I've gone to this little bandit crankbait here and we're gonna see what we can do. We're gonna um, fish a new bait called the Brush Puppy by Case Plastics that he just designed and I had some input with him on designing that. And the guys that like to fish the baby brush hogs and stuff are gonna find that they've got a whole new lure and a lot better action, a lot softer bait and it fits the bill perfect and we may even do some drop shot in here. We're just going to let the fish tell us what they want. I got a variety of everything rigged up and ready for us to go. As long as this, this chatter, chatter bait keeps catching fish, I'll, I'm sticking with it. I know, I know as long as you're catching fish, I'll have a hard time getting it out of your hand. Carl, when, we're, when you see, I mean you've just mentioned about 35 different pieces of structure here. When you see riprap, how do you want to fish this riprap? You know, well, you want to use a riprap to your advantage, and my philosophy there is, um, right now I know the last couple of days I've been getting my better fish off the wood. Mm -hmm. We do have a front coming through, um, but now if we were in the dead middle of the summer, <laughs> you know, we've got good water temperature here now. We're um, back this far in the creek here. We're still even. We have uh, 77.1 water temperature. If it was a little bit later in the season. When you get the colder nights and stuff, as the sun comes up, you want to really target that riffraff because it's going to absorb the heat from the sun, warm the water up a little bit for them there. Mm -hmm. um, right now we got wood on an island point with deep water that drops. You don't want to pass that up. No. <laughs> no. So we're going to see if somebody's home. This is a little baby brush puppy 
by Case Plastics here, Bob. Mm -hmm. um, Charlie Case just they just became available. Been working with him for several months on it, and uh, he designed it. But I had some input on it, and I, I used to fish a lot of baby brush hogs until this came out. <laughs> <laughs> I gave them all away, I think now. <laughs> but um, this has this has this dual tail, and you can see this little tail and how much action it has. Mm -hmm. And what I've done is because I knew that these fish wanted a natural color. This is a green pumpkin. The one I have for you is a green pumpkin candy. Mm -hmm. I've dipped both these tails in the chartreuse dipping dye. Mm -hmm. That way we can fish this nat natural bait presentation to these fish, but we can give them something so they can find this bait in the dirty water. That little tail with all that action and those little tails dipped in the chartreuse dipping dye, mm -hmm. they, we can target those fish that want to finesse bait back in here that don't want to hit a reaction bait and chase it down. Mm -hmm. And we can get them. And all I do is I'm Texas rigging it. I'm splitting the first perforation on this little paddle, and I'm leaving the second one there. Mm -hmm. And then I'm dipping those legs in chartreuse dipping dye, and just fish it. The way I'm fishing it is, and, and I'm fishing it on spinning tackle because I want that straight fall presentation. And I'm letting it hit there, and I'm just working it along the bottom, real easy. I fill the bottom and just giving it a little hop, kind of like I was working it there alongside the boat showing you the tail. Mm -hmm. And I'm just hopping it along the little bottom right there and it's like candy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, it's just coming up and there's, there's tails are just going down exactly. and flipping up and down. That's going to get that, that fish to go through. And, and I might every, you know, I might, you know, hop it four or five times and I'll let it sit still for a minute. Mm -hmm. and hop it four or five times, let it sit for a minute. Well, what we've got is we've got this island here and we've got the wind blowing into this creek like we've talked about earlier. And the wind's blowing, we've got high tide. We've worked our way down this island. We've already had two fish on the chatterbait here on this pass. Well, we have the end of the island, we have some wood here. We got a big lay down, the stumps down there. So the bass are gonna position themselves. They got ambush um, covering structure here. They're going to position themselves. The bait fish are going to be coming down with the wind. The tide was coming in. The tide is going to start, is moving out now. Mm -hmm. It's not going to move out as fast because we've got this real heavy wind blowing it in here. But those fish are going to position themselves down here. A bass is a predator, but he's a lazy predator in a way. He's very smart. But I have what I call the one foot zone. And when I look at our area and a piece of wood and I try to fish it thinking, with the idea that the bass is going to travel, in my thoughts, about a foot to get my bait. He's not like a lot of other predators. He's not going to chase it down. Mm -hmm. Small mouse is going to just run and mm -hmm. if it's in his territory, it's fair game. Um, stripers are the same way. Largemouth bass is a lot different. He, he doesn't want to have to work that hard for his meal. So he's looking at this habitat. This is his home and he knows he can sit there off that point, make himself comfortable in that big lay down. And as the bait fish come, he just has to move about a foot and he's got a meal. So why should he go work and chase everything down? And that's kind of like how I look at this when I'm looking at it and deciding what I want to do. So remember what Carl just said. Remember that one foot rule. If you see a stick up, a log, uh, some little point there like that, remember, fish is probably going to be about one foot away from it. It's a good tip to remember. Right here is a perfect example, Bob. We got a little cut here. We got some big piece of timber, a lot of limbs off of it. Comes up on a shallow flat. We got a couple old floating docks here. Perfect place, way this wind's blowing into the creek here and the current's going out because the tide's going out. Perfect place for somebody to stage up in here, you know, get a good meal on some bait fish. They'll get bunched up in here. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just had a hit. I thought I had him there. Hold on. Oh, got him. <laughs> On the brush puppy. <laughs> Carl, well, we're taking that fish off and get it. You were just mentioning that you thought you had the fish, but he, he took off and ran with it. Yes, he did. He, he took off with it. And he is lively. <laughs> there he goes. You think that wasn't a lively little fish? <laughs> <laughs> His mouth isn't big enough to even get my thumb in there hardly. <laughs> yep, he picked up that brush puppy. I felt him pick up the brush puppy. And 
I thought I'd lost him, and then I felt the, I saw the line moving back towards me, so I knew I had him. Here's a perfect example why you want to do your scouting on low tide here, Bob. You can see you got it's changed. We did have the deep. Back there, we had a deep portion on the right side. Now it's changed to the left as the creeks made the bends. Mm -hmm. And you can look up here, we got the bridge tubes, the openings. You can see the big rock boulders, slabs up here. You, you're going to go to the left side there, and then you just spin, you know, fork your way around once you get through, the, through under the bridge. And you got all kinds of rocks and stuff here and wood. And you know, if you were in here on high tide, you'd go through here and you'd be bumping stuff and you may not see it, but mm -hmm. you like to, I like to do a lot of my scouting. Come back here on low tide, find out what I'm dealing with, where I can go, how far I can go. Then I come back here on high tide and I know I can maneuver a lot better. You can see the, all that's the water line on the shoreline, the mud line, yeah. you know, we had good water back here before the tide went out. But now, the low tide is going to make these fish pull down and conjugate stack up a little bit too. Right, that's a pull, a pull that bait fish off of those those weeds and all that stuff and then they'll move out into here. Another pointer that I, you, people want to keep in mind is when you're scouting these new places, you know, charts are only as accurate as they were when they were printed. If you do your scouting on low tide, you may not be able to go as far as you can sometimes on the high tide, which this is going to be a perfect example back past this bridge in this creek. But you know if you start getting in trouble, you got more water coming. <laughs> if you go do your scouting on high tide and you get in trouble, you know you're in trouble. Yeah, because it isn't going for a long time. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you know, it's amazing, Carl, that fish can be actually up in this, this thin water like this. Yeah, Bob, one, one thing you want to do up here is there's no such a thing as fishing too shallow. It just doesn't happen. If there's enough water for to cover their fins, there's enough water for them. Oh, I got one! That fish came out of, I'm going to say, a foot and a half of water, maybe two. Okay, we're just talking about that skinny water. Yes, sir. Nice northeast creek, largemouth bass. That's a good fish. Nice fish. Right Especially back here in the skinny water. Yeah. yeah. He tore that up. He just, he just probably just sucked it right up. Huh? Yes, sir. He, he wanted it. And let's see if we can get him out here without. Hey Bob, this is too deep. See how it's back there in the real bony part of the tongue back in there? Uh -huh. There's a new tool out that just was at ICAST. I just saw and I've got it here on a boat. If you'll just, we can, you can hold the rod for me or whatever. All I need for you to do is hold this line so that that stays there. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to go down in with this tool and I'm going to, you hold it up. I'm going to go down in. And there we go. What we've done is we cut the barb off, hold it up a little bit more, and I'm going to cut it one more time. I want you to hold it so that I push the barb down into the tool. There we go. You see we cut the barb off of there? Off the end of that hook. Mm -hmm. Well, now we can get down in there and work with that. And we're not going to do nowhere near as much damage to this poor guy because we're not trying to pull that bar back through. See how easy that came out, just like that. See, take a shot. There's no damage down in there to that fish's tongue. He's not even bleeding. By cutting that bar, we went and made the second cut, so we didn't have so much of the bend. Mm -hmm. We just released it right at that bony. Tongue, you never know that that fish no, was ever no. gun hooked like that. No, and that's, that was hooked, that was quite deep, and, and no, no blood, no nothing. No, not, not a drop of blood. That's we it. didn't do any damage to that fish. Put him back. We're going to put this poor guy back here. He gave us some good excitement. We're going to put him back here so some young kid can come back here and catch that fish again and enjoy it. There he goes. He just swam right off. He's happy as happy can be. And all we got to do is replace the hook.
Bob, we got a nice little point here off of this island. You can see we got a big wood lay down there, runs there, and then we got a big another lay down there with the stump on it. Perfect place for a nice largemouth bass to be hanging up in there close to that log and the point of that island. I'm just waiting to ambush some nice fish coming in, in here. The tide's coming in here, so that would be the perfect place for them to be is the bait fish all come with the tide. There you go. Right there. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you can get him, girl. <laughs> Whoa. Can you get him? He's still fresh. There we go. <laughs> Let me get that dog. Oh, come here, son. There we go. That's a nice bass, Carl. And I want to just mention the fact that you had pointed out that this point <laughs> holds some good fish. Yes, sir. Again, just explain the cover that we had there, Carl. Well, we got the, the northern end of this uh, island here, that point, and you got a big log lay down and the stump down at the end. And when the tide's moving, the bait fish are moving with it, and it's just a good ambush. Spot and he was right. He was textbook. He was right, he was right between the log and the island yeah. there. It looked like the way he hit. So he yeah. was right where he should have been. Yeah. He come right off. And guess what? I got him on. <laughs> Favorite chatterbait. My chatterbait. <laughs> All right. Let's get this boy back in. Ah, oh, that's a nice fish. Textbook. Thanks, Carl. Yes, sir. Here we go, Bob. We got this point here. We got. Tide coming in, we got some isolated cover here. And the tide is pushing us, right? The tide's coming in, yes sir. The tide's pushing us up on this point, carrying us up on this point. And you got this big lay oh, down yeah, here. Wait, look, hey, come back for it. Yeah. Right where he should have been. Oh, big fish. Oh. <laughs> come over here, get him, get over there. Right off of that log. Guess what I caught it on, Carl? <laughs> that chatterbait. Yes, sir. That chatterbait. Oh, he's in there. I'll get him out. Look at that. It's a nice, fat, chunky fish. Look at them spots on him. And now for a closer look at today's tackle, Delaware Valley Outdoors presents The Tackle Box. For more information about the tackle used on today's show, go to DelawareValleyOutdoors.com. We're here with the tackle box, Carl, and I know we we're on the river today. Had some tough conditions, but uh, you know everything came through like I <laughs> like we like it. The baits that we we started out with this morning, we had a tide that was going out, and uh, we had a little wind, so we went to these baits. Now tell us about this bait here. This is a new bait for you, right? Yes, sir. That's a new bait by Case Plastics. Um, Charlie Case knew that I used to throw a lot of baby brush hogs, and um, I was talking to him and um, he wanted to design something to fill that gap. Um, it's a little bit bigger than a baby brush hog, not as big as a brush hog, but it's a creature type bait. Mm -hmm. uh, finesse. What it does is um, how we've got it rigged there. I Texas rig it with the weight peg mm -hmm. and it comes like the one you see there, just green pumpkin. What I did was the muddy water back in there because we went in there this morning, we had good two and a half, three foot waves on the water, probably about 20, 25 mile an hour winds. And that creek got real muddy. So what I did was those fish back there want a natural presentation. They're feeding on natural bait fish. So we wanted to stay with the natural color uh, bait, but we need to be able to let them find that tail. That tail has just awesome action, um, as the guys could see in the, in the video, in the show. And I dipped the tails in chartreuse dip and dye so that they'd be able to find the action of those tails in that dirty, muddy water real easily. And then you also, you clip the, this has been beat up a little bit because we one, had some fish on That it. one actually put some fish in the boat yeah. today, didn't but it? But you actually cut those little tails. I just break one, the first preparation on that paddle, I break open so and I leave the second one up by the body in place. Okay, now this is the same bait, except it's one of my favorite colors. And uh, this that is the... That's the one you were throwing. That's a green pumpkin candy. Everything's the same as the green pumpkin you just had that I was throwing. We were just throwing, you had that with the green, with the green and the purple and a little blue, bit of blue sparkle in it. And uh, head-wise? Um, we were throwing quarter ounce 
weight mm -hmm. on there today. That's a quarter ounce of weight um, because we had a lot of wind. If we didn't have the wind, we could have scaled back to an eighth or three sixteenths or something. And you could Texas rig this with a regular. Like you a regular can. Weight I too. just with my clients, I use that. If I'm going to peg it, I use that because it makes it quicker and easier to tie. That's all. Now, this one, this is a great little bait here. And uh, tell us about that because of the conditions we had. That is a Bandit 200 series crankbait. Um, that is my go-to standard color bait in this upper bay with all the dirty and stained water. It's a chartreuse purple back sparkle. Um, excellent bait. Um, that Bandit's probably for a reasonably priced crankbait, four or five dollar range. Um, you know, probably the most accurate, best, true running crankbait mass produced in that price range you can find. And the size was important because of the bait fish we had and also the, the depth of water because we were fishing in <laughs> a little real shallow water and right. it dropped off. Right, I was, um, that thing runs about four to six feet and I was, as you could see, I was beating up the wood in the bottom with it and that's, and that's what, what I really wanted. Want I, I wanted to. All right, now. We got to talk about this bait. We've talked about this bait before one time, but tell, tell the viewers what this that, is. That bait, when I was tying our stuff on this morning to meet you, I, I was thinking what I wanted to tie on for you. And I was like, well, I can't take bob fishing again without doing the chatter bait. So that's a chatter bait. That's a 3 8 and that's a white. Mm -hmm. um, you did for a while have a, a trailer hook on there this morning, and then you, know, you took it off. We went without that. But, um, that's basic chatter bait, um, no modifications to it at all. And it's got it, the again, vibration in the dirty water. And as you were experiencing last time, you get a rhythmatic retrieve, whether it's a slow or fast or just that. Once you find that rhythmatic retrieve, it, the, vi the vibration, it just drives them crazy. It's unbelievable. I've, I have one of these baits and I didn't even bring it down because I wasn't going to give it up. But I knew, I knew Carl would get me another one. Caught a lot of fish on this today, Carl, and some nice big fish. Yes, sir. Again, this is a really versatile uh, bait because I can throw it like a spinner bait. I can drop it like a jig. You know, it's just a it's a great bait. Or you can run it like a crankbait. And, and it's a chatterbug. Quickly, we're not going to talk too much about this, but tell us tell us about this frog. This is unbelievable. That's one of the hottest secrets to come out of Japan here this year. Um, that's called, that's made by a Japanese company called Deps, D-E-P-S. It's a Basaruski um, is the name of the frog. It, it's a frog walking type bait. It's imported by um, a company called Optimum Baits. And they're the importer distributor. They're kind of hard to get. Uh, most of the guys have to get them mail order. That frog is just, it looks like nothing, but it, the walk, the walking action of it and when you pop it is just awesome. It's something that you just can't, you can't describe it yet till, till we'll see it. We're going fishing with this later on, so I, I know that. Carl, just quickly, lines, what do you recommend down here? Lines, we talked about lines while we were fishing today. Um, that's Iser line, the one in your left hand, the triple X is 12 pound, that's what I use on my spinning reels today. Um, the platinum green in your right hand, that's what I use on my bait casters, I use that on all my generals and the crankbaits we use 10 pound. Okay, and one other thing we're gonna just talk about quickly is this. Tell us about this, this item here. And you can that is a new item. I'm, I found this product at the ICAST show a couple weeks ago, and I always look for the conservation type things. Um, we had a gut hook fish. All you do is you just get that hook point exposed, reach down with this tool, and you get the barb, point into the hole there in it, you, you push it down, and you clip it, it clicks it off and, it, and the piece is, goes up in the barrel. Tell you what, this is something that you really should have if you're, if you're tournament fishing, it'll save you some fish because you could have a dead fish. Right. And that's the tackle box. As we work our way down the shoreline here, Bob, the tides move down on us. You can see all this exposed cover that we have here and many obstacles that your lure and your line have. Um, as we've talked before, you know, um, 
There's no such a thing on this upper bay as fishing too shallow. It doesn't exist. Uh, if there's enough water there to cover their fins, they're probably there. A lot of this wood's old and it has barnacles. It has nails in it and all kinds of stuff. It's just rough stuff with rocks. And you can see the water clarity. It's a little bit messed up today from the winds we've had the last couple days. And things still haven't 100% recuperated from all the rain, the big rain of 2006. But normally our water is pretty stained. And um, you really, your fluorocarbons and stuff like that, and, and your, and your, your um, finesse lines, you got to be careful with that because you get a good fish up in all this timber and it's got barnacles and it's got sharp edges and they get in this grass and you know you could you could turn a day of putting some good fish in the boat into a day of wiping some tears <laughs> um, <laughs> you want to use something um, that has very low stretch and of course you want very low memory because you don't want to have all kinds of birds and nest problems and everything else. Um, one thing you can do that people can do, especially with a spinner reel to keep that down is when they, after they cast, close the bail. If you close the bail by hand, you'll have very, very few birds nest. Um, on my spinning equipment here, I've got either 10 or 12 pound Iserline Triple X. It's a copolymer monofilament. It has very, very low memory, very low stretch, and excellent abrasion resistance, high tensile strength. This 12 pound test triple X won't break until probably about 18, 19 pounds. The mm -hmm. platinum green series I use on the bait casters there, and most of my general bait casters have 12 pound platinum green, and that's pushing over 20 break and strength there. But it, the thing is, is sometimes I'll fish a spinner bait or that chatter bait all day long, catch fish, and I have to retie. It's, uh, it'll hold up to all these barnacles and stuff. So, regardless of what kind of line you're using, you want to come down here. You want to use a high abrasion re resistant line. And you want something that doesn't have so much memory that you're playing with it every other cast and getting frustrated. And you'll have, you know, a lot less tears in your eyes. I, you know, you can see. I mean, with the water is down as it is. There's a lot of stuff that's actually under the water when the tide's up and your lure is going to go over top of that stuff, bouncing it, nicking it, hitting it. And then when you get that fish, the first <laughs> thing he's going to do is try to go back. <laughs> and he's going to wrap you around little limbs that have barnacles on them and stuff. Even if you yank him out of there fast, mm -hmm. he's going to drag your line across all those little limbs that have barnacles and they'll cut your line and or weaken it just as fast as the big limbs will. And you know, you, you mentioned the, the, the memory thing. It, it, it's not that only that, it's the casting ability of it. The, the line comes off that reel nice and smooth. It's real, it's pliable in a sense. It's mm -hmm. not like, like real, we talk like rope. You know, it's not right. like that. It's very soft and supple and really a uh, nice fish. <laughs> right at the boat. Right yes, at the sir. boat. At yes, the boat. sir. Oh, Down to Captain Carl. Northeast Creek. Car, you helped me a lot today. Sometime I'm going to actually catch some fish in a tournament down here and do, do real well. Hey, I'm Bob Murray. Go to our website, Delaware Valley Outdoors. Link up with Carl. We got all kinds of fishing reports from Carl down here. I'll see you on the water. All right. Right at the boat, man. Right at the boat. This is a big fish, man. <laughs> Might need a net. Okay. Oh, I got a stick. <laughs> <laughs> I felt just like a fish.